Mr. Sadowski here coming to you from C209 at the high school and let's do a little bit of a lesson here with this door. First of all, a little joke. What is a door? Not a door. That's right. What is a jar? That's horrible. Alright, all right, so here's what's going to happen. I'm sorry, that was bad. Um, I'm going to close the door. I'm going to close the door by applying a force, but here's the key. I'm not just going to apply a force and let it go. I'm going to apply a constant force and follow it as it goes. So let's watch that happen. Okay, so what did you notice happened to the rotational motion of the door? Right, it got faster and faster. So by applying a force, a constant force, and following it with the motion, I produce a rotational, or what's called an angular acceleration. So the question is, what can I do to change that angular acceleration? Okay, I'm going to push harder. So I'm going to apply the force, following it along again, but I'm going to push harder as I do so. Okay, that woke you up, right? Okay, so clearly what I produce here, I produce a larger angular acceleration. So that makes more that makes sense, right? More force, sped up more quickly. Okay, well, what else can I change? Well, I'm going to change where I'm applying the force. So I'm going to go back to the first force I used. I'm going to apply, instead of all the way away from the hinge, I'm going to apply it halfway from the hinge to the outside of the door. Same force as the first one, but half the distance from the axis of rotation. Well, it's a little bit tough to tell, but hopefully you saw it's still sped up, but not as much as before. So now we see it's not just how much force, it's where I'm applying it. So now I'm going to use that same force following along as I go, but applying it very close to the hinge. Let's watch what happens. Okay, hopefully now you saw, certainly it's still sped up, but not nearly as quickly as before. So we really see that the distance from the axis of rotation really does matter. Let's try one more thing. So I changed how much force there was, I changed where the force was located, now let's change the direction of the force. So I'm going to apply that same force, but this time on the handle, I'm going to apply the force this way. Let's see what happens. Okay, nothing happened. And of course, you shouldn't expect anything to happen because no one closes a door that way, right? Why on earth would I be closing a door by pulling this way? So now we see the direction of applying the force matters as well. Now, here's where we have to make sure we're very, very clear about the units of torque versus the units of work. They're both newtons times meters, but work and torque are not the same thing. And here's the difference. When we talk about work, it's F delta X cosine theta, where delta X is the displacement, right? And so you pick a point on the object or the object itself and you watch it move from place to place. And so in this case, that would be sort of like the path length that I'm pushing along. But that's not what we're talking about here. Here, remember, I changed where I was pushing. This is the position vector, the distance from the axis of rotation to the application of the force. That's just a measure of that distance, but it's not the distance traveled, right? In torque being F R, or excuse me, R F sine theta, Right? The R is not how far it's moving, but how far the force is measured from the axis of rotation. Those are just not the same thing. And so we see the Newton meters for work, which are joules, are not the same thing as the Newton meters for torque. 